Come on, we can do better than that. Why don't you put your hands together? Why don't you stand and raise your hands unto the Lord? Hallelujah. It's preaching time. It's preaching time in the house, and we, we understand any time it's preaching time, it's an opportunity for us to hear from the Lord. And the Bible declares any time the Lord opens up his mouth to say anything, their lives are changed. Every time he opens up his mouth, something happens. Is there anybody in the house that needs something to happen? And here we come right now, Lord, before your throne. Here we come right now in this preaching moment. And we say, Lord, move as only you can move. Speak as only you can speak. Right now, Lord, encourage and inspire as only you can. Somebody came in feeling down. Let them leave good. Let them leave better than they came. In the name of Jesus, dear Lord, do it. In the name of Jesus, do it. I don't even know to ask for right now. In the name of Jesus, bless this church. Bless this pastor. May this be fertile ground. May we receive it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We come to our preaching moment, and the young lady read our scripture this morning for us, and we come back, and I just want to read two verses, the first two verses of Genesis chapter 22, and it reads, now it came to pass after these things that God tested Abraham and said to him, Abraham, and he said, here am I. And then he said, take now your only son, your son Isaac, whom you love, and go to the mountain called Moriah and offer him there as a burnt offering on the one in which I shall tell you. And for the next moment, for my graduates and for everybody that's graduated and moved on, I just want to tell you that there's still going to be tests. They're, they're, they're still going to be tests, and I want to tell everybody that everyone has to go to Mount Moriah. E everyone has to go to Mount Moriah. The No Child Left Behind Act was passed through Congress and was signed into law by President George W. Bush on January 8, 2002. The legislation mandated standardized testing in grades through, through, three through eight and in the 10th grade in all 50 states in these United States of America. Standardized tests are taken by everyone. Everyone has to take standardized tests. They are the measure of the caliber of your ability to perform compared to everyone else that takes that test. And today I realize, despite the frustrations and edu that educational leaders and teachers have trying to help students pass these tests, and the stress that parents and students and teachers face trying to pass these tests, there is always, there's always, there's always, there's always a standardized test if you want to go to another level. Uh, there are ACTs, there are SATs, there are PSATs, there's the GRE, and the list goes on, and every standardized test puts a lump in the test taker's throat because your performance on standardized tests determine your future. And today I want to introduce the Mount Moriah standardized test, which examines your ability to believe God will provide no matter what. Uh, I'm trying to let you know that no matter how old you are, there's still a standardized test for you. And so uh, how we do on this test determines how much God is able to do in our lives. And just like every standardized test comes with its own sets of challenges, it's at Mount Moriah, where you will find yourself having to answer multiple choice questions with answers that seem right, although only one is correct. Uh, additionally, at Mount Moriah, you will find some open-ended questions where you can't simply choose an answer, but your knowledge
knowledge about God's provision is necessary. It's at Mount Moriah where this test makes you question God because God is asking you to sacrifice more than you think you can. It's at Mount Moriah where this test requires you to go through things in which you never could imagine. It's at this place that it causes you to deal with things that scare you and make emotions rise in you that you never knew you had. Mount Moriah manufactures experiences that make anger swell up in you because God will have seemingly crossed the line. Has God ever crossed the line? It will come to a place where it feels like God has seemingly crossed the line and allowed tragedy and messed up things to occur in your life and you thought that God would never allow such to happen, but it's at Mount Moriah where seemingly your hopes and dreams come crashing down, where all that you were working for and preparing for vanishes, and so you say, many of us are asking, is there an alternative test? Do I have to take the Mount Moriah standardized test? Uh, and the answer is no. And everyone has to go Mount Moriah, and everyone has to take this test. And as I look at the reviews for the Mount Moriah standardized test, I find Abraham's entry in the comment box, which reads, Mount Moriah is a place that messed me up that made me do something that I never wanted to do, uh, but it is the, the place where I saw God like never before. It's the place where God showed up and showed out like never before, and it's the place where I could not have received what God had for me if I didn't go and pass my test. Uh, Abraham titled his entry as the game changer in his life, uh, the place where life can and never will be the same afterwards, the place where despite what's going on in your life, you can find out what favor really looks like. The place where your life is forever changed. And when we go to this place, because of what you just went through, it's the place that God reminds you that he is God that he can do all things, uh, that he has a plan for your life, and above and beyond that, all things work together for the good. So it's important, y'all, to know, it's important to know that Mount Moriah, and Mar Mount Moriah in itself means chosen by God. So I need everybody to understand we end up at Mount Moriah because God has chosen certain mountains in our lives that we must climb in order to see certain things. More specifically, our text reveals Mount Moriah is the place that is chosen by God to assess three abilities in your life. Y'all still with me? Uh, Mount Moriah is the place everybody goes. Say, we all got to go. Y'all didn't say it because y'all don't want to go, but guess what? You got to go anyway. Say, we all got to go. As Mount Moriah is a standardized test, and we all got to take it. And the first thing that it's trying to assess is your ability to sacrifice. Your ability to sacrifice. Your ability to sacrifice. Here it is. You didn't believe that it could happen, but it's happening. Although Abraham is pushing 100 years old, a son is born in the midst of what was thought to be a barren situation. Uh, after being able to enjoy the promise and blessing of God, Abraham is then asked to sacrifice it. And I need to remind someone that oftentimes what we're asked to sacrifice is a test to see if God can activate his greater plan in our lives. Isaac wasn't the end, but the beginning of what God was going to do in Abraham's life. Furthermore, Isaac was just the seed and a seed of the fruitful harvest that was to come. Isaac was part of a blessing that showed God can do anything. Isaac was part of the lesson that teaches that God is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all we can ask, think, or imagine. But here it is, you all. I need you all to understand that Isaac was what God started the blessing with. And he wanted us to know that if you can't sacrifice Isaac, then I can't trust you with what I'm about to give you. Uh, I, Abraham was sitting there, and he was asking God, well, how is it that you want 
want me to sacrifice Isaac when he is the birthright and he is the beginning of the promise in which you gave me. And you said that my fruit would be as much as the sand on the seashore. And Isaac is the only thing that I have now. But God says, don't worry about what I'm asking you to sacrifice. Because if you can't sacrifice Isaac, then you're not ready for all of that I'm about to give you. And right now, somebody is out here saying, Lord, I don't know if you can do all that you're asking me to do. I don't know if I can go through all that you're asking me to go through. But God is saying, if you can't go through this now, you can't handle what I'm about to give you on the other side of through. And I just need somebody right now to understand that God has greater for you. If you can ever make it up in your mind that I don't care what he asked me to do, I'm going to make it through so I can get to the other side and see the greater. And so here it is, y'all. Here, here it is that when we get to this place, not only, not only, not only, not only, this is what I need us to understand. For our greater good, that whenever, whenever, y'all, we lift our sacrifice to God in obedience, God changes it into something greater. <sighs> not only does God give it back to us, but he presses it down shakes it together that it might run over. Uh, not only does he give Isaac back to Abraham, but he also gives Isaac a ram in the bush and a chance for Abraham to brag on God and Isaac a testimony that he never would have had had his daddy never done what he was supposed to do. And I just wonder if there's anybody in the house right now that will give God a chance to show up and show out. Is there anybody in the house that will believe God that when God says, I need you to go forth, when God says, I need you to do it, when God says, can't nobody do it, uh, like Harry C., right? Uh, I need you to go forward uh, so that you can do what God is asking you to do, uh, that you might receive the blessing uh, on the other side of through. Uh, if you do not sacrifice, uh, you will never find uh, the ram in the bush. Uh, if you don't sacrifice, uh, you'll never see uh, what God has for you. Uh, if you're scared uh, to give God all that you have, you'll never, ever be able to see God show up and show out. And I just wonder if there's anybody here that wants to see the Lord show up. Oh. oh. Now maybe I need to move on. Maybe I need to move on. First of all, it challenges your ability to sacrifice. Secondly, it challenges your ability to worship. Do I have any worshipers in the house? Yeah, I'm going to find out. Any worshipers in the house? Listen, despite your emotions, despite your worries, despite your feelings, your attachments, insecurities, and despite what you're comfortable with, you have to learn how to worship anyway. Ah. Uh. Worship is the acknowledgement of who God is, which is why I believe, y'all got to read this text. Go home and read this thing again. Genesis chapter 22, 1 through 12. Listen to me. I, I believe this is why when we read this story, we never hear Isaac say anything else. When we look at this thing, and when we look at this thing, his initial question was, Daddy, we have the wood, we have the fire, but where is the lamb. And daddy said, God will provide. And I need y'all to see this thing the way that I see it, because for Isaac, Isaac says not another word. And I need us to understand that you can worship God without saying one blessed word. You can worship God without saying one word. Because when Isaac was wrapped up, placed on the altar, and his daddy pulled a knife out, we still don't hear Isaac saying one word. And what I need y'all to understand, Isaac doesn't say anything because Isaac is worshiping God. Isaac is thinking about what God can do. I know I'm tied up. I know I'm about to be sacrificed. I know he has a knife and he's about to kill me. But I believe that God will set me free. I believe that God will make a 
way. I believe that God, so Isaac just raises his hands. He just raises his hands unto the Lord. And I want to submit to you that you can worship God without saying one word as long as you allow your actions to speak for you. Isaac was worshiping in silence. And as he believed in who God was, he didn't believe in what he saw. Somebody right now is going through things and you have allowed what you see to dictate how you worship. Some of us are in here and we can't even raise our hands because we know what we're going to see when we go home. Some of us know what we're going to see on Monday. Uh, some of us know how our children are going to act as soon as we leave this church. Uh, some of us know how our car is going to be acting up and we hope it starts as soon as we get to the parking lot. Uh, some of us are scared uh, that things just not going to work well. Uh, and so we're in here and we can't even smile, let alone clap our hands uh, when they're singing. Uh, and they say, that sounds good, uh, but you don't know my story. That sounds good, uh, but you don't know what I'm going through. That sounds good, but you don't got to go through what I got to go through. Uh, but what I'm trying to tell you is whatever you got to go through, uh, you got to learn to worship anyway. Uh, you got to learn to talk to God uh, and see God uh, for what God really is. Uh, you got to learn uh, that it doesn't matter what you see uh, if you're willing to worship. I wonder if anybody can lift your faith to the level of what God had for Isaac so that God can deliver you even though you're in a detrimental situation. I just wonder if anybody can trust God to go through what you must so that God can take you to another level. I just wonder, y'all, it's, it's not until you're able to worship in spite of uh, that you'll find the ram in the bush. And I know there's plenty of people in here that are saying, I need a ram. I need a ram in the bush. I, I don't know how it's going to work out. I need to find a ram in the bush. I, I just wish God would show up and show out, but he doesn't show up. And he doesn't show out until you're willing to worship anyway. I know it hurts, but worship anyway. I know you're scared, but worship anyway. I know you need a healing, but worship anyway. I know you can't figure it out, but worship anyway. I know you can't see your way, but worship Oh. I just wish somebody would just lift their hands and say, I'm going to worship anyway. Uh, I'm going to worship anyway. Uh, I'm going to worship anyway. Uh, but here it is, y'all. Uh, uh, first of all, Mount Moriah tested your ability to sacrifice. Secondly, it tested your ability to worship. But lastly, it tested your ability to talk differently. On the way to... Mount Moriah. Abraham doesn't say one negative word about his situation, his circumstance, his instructions, or his fear. Go home and read it. His only words were to his servants, stay here. Let me back up. He only has one son. God had promised him this son in his old age. Matter of fact, he laughed at God when God told him he was going to have a son. It was a promise that was supposed to lead to greater. And here it is, God is telling him to sacrifice it, which in essence means that I need you to sacrifice the future that you thought you were going to have. What you thought you was about to walk into, I need you to throw that away. The college you thought you were going to, I'm about to take that away. The scholarship you thought you were going to have, I'm about to take that away. The job that you just got, I'm about to take that away. And here it is, Abraham doesn't say one negative thing. He says to his servants, me and my boy, we're going over here to worship, and then we're going to come back unto you. But then his instructions say, I need you to go up here, and I need you to sacrifice your son. But here it is. He's telling his servants, we're going over here, and we're going to come back after we what? After we worship. And then, listen, 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 listen. Even though he was seemingly going to have to sacrifice his son, Abraham spoke something different. He said, we're going to worship, then we're coming back. So Abraham basically says, 
we are going over here, and then we're going to lift the Lord up, and then we shall return. In other words, Abraham was suggesting, I'm not going to speak my fears into existence. I'm not going to speak what I don't understand into existence. I'm not going to speak the fact that I believe the Lord will make a way. That's all I'm going to say. And I just want to challenge somebody in here today that if you would just open up your mouth and only say what the Lord can do uh, instead of lifting up your problems, uh, instead of lifting up your problems, uh, instead of lifting up your struggle, uh, instead of saying, I don't know if it's going to work. Why don't you just lift up the Lord and tell yourself, uh, tell your situation, your scenario, this is what my God can do. Because when you speak differently, you see. When you speak differently, you see differently. And so then Abraham's only other words to his son were this, God will. That's all he said, y'all. And I listen to our conversations and we say way more than that. And none of it is most of the time positive. But here it is, all he says is we going to worship and we're coming back and I know my God will provide. What would happen if we start talking like that? I know what you're going through, but what would happen if you just start saying, I'm going to worship because I know God will provide. Uh, yeah, I just lost my job, but I'm going to worship because I know God will provide. Uh, I don't know where I'm going to make it. I don't know when it's going to happen. I don't know when my healing is on the way, but I'm going to worship uh, because I know God uh, will make a way. Uh, I just wonder, is there anybody in the house uh, that knows that God will uh, provide? Uh, is there anybody in here? Uh, let me get a little closer then. Uh, is there anybody in the house uh, that knows uh, that God will uh, make a way? Uh, I don't know uh, what's going on on this side, uh, but is there anybody uh, in this church uh, that knows uh, despite what you're going through, uh, God can still uh, work that thing out? Uh, I know it seems like it's over. I know it seems like it's messed up. I know it seems like you can't come back, but God says, I will, I shall, I can make a way out of nowhere. I know your back is up against the wall and you have nowhere to go, but God says, I will make a way out of nowhere. Is there anybody in here that believes the word of the Lord when he says you're more than a conqueror? I know you feel defeated, but if you just throw your head back and tell the Lord, I know you will provide. I know you will. Oh, listen, listen, listen. Do I have any football fans in the house? Any football fans in the house? And when we get down, it's one second left on the clock. We're on the other side of the 50, and we're trying to still score. They say it's time for. <laughs> and what I need you to understand, y'all, is where that came from. I was looking the other day, and I came across the article, and it was Roger Staubach. And he was playing for the who? All right, I got some Cowboy fans in here. Uh, he was playing for the Dallas Cowboys. They were, they were playing the Minnesota Vikings. It was a playoff game in December. They were down versus the Vikings. And this is what he says. He says, he says we were down, and I pick up the football. I drive back. I threw the ball. I closed my eyes and said, hell, Mary, and what I need y'all to understand uh, is who Mary really is. Uh, Mary is the one uh, that allows Jesus uh, to show up uh, and show out. Uh, and what I need y'all to understand uh, is when you're going through, uh, you got to give God uh, a chance to show up uh, and show out. Uh, I don't know what's going on. Uh, I don't know what you're dealing with, uh, but I wonder if there's anybody in the house uh, that will give Jesus uh, a chance says to show up uh, and show out. Uh, I don't know. Uh, maybe you dropping back uh, and you just need to close your eyes uh, and say, Jesus, take it. Oh, Jesus, take it. Uh, I don't know what you're going through, uh, but maybe you just need to drop back. Uh, close your eyes uh, and say, the Lord will provide. I don't know what you're going through, uh, but maybe you just need to close your eyes uh, and say, Lord, show up uh, and show out uh, in my life uh, because I know you can. Is there anybody in here that knows he can? 
All right, if you stand to your feet, if you know, he can. Stand to your feet. Stand to your feet. Stand to your feet if you know he can. If you know he can. And this is what I need. Yeah. This is what I need. I've been here all day, and I've been listening to the testimonies. I hear the sickness. I hear the miracles at the same time. I've been here all day, and I've heard the problems, but I've heard how God has made a way still. And what I need us to understand is that problems and a way out of no way always coexist. But it takes a believer to see it. And right now, I need everybody in here to understand if you have issue and if you have problem, the solution is right there with it. But today, you cannot get the solution if you can't believe God for it. And so right now, this is what I'm asking you. Everybody close your eyes. And this is how I do this thing. This is nobody's business but God. And so if I can see the white in your eyes, then you have your eyes not closed. But everybody close your eyes. And this is what God wants to know. If you acknowledge the fact that you have something that you don't know how to deal with in your life, just raise your hand right now. If something's going on in your life and you don't know how to deal with it right now, just raise your hand. We're not going to embarrass you. We're not going to do. God just wants to know if you're willing to acknowledge that he can do something about it in his presence. So right now, if you're going through, if you don't know how you're going to make it, you don't know how it's going to work out, you need the Lord to provide a ram in the bush, raise your hand. Yeah. Now put it down. Now, this is what I need you to understand. Maybe you're at Mount Moriah and the Lord is saying this to you. I'm ready for you to sacrifice what you don't even know was meant to be a sacrifice in the first place. Some of us are holding on to some things in which we don't want to give up. The Lord is saying, will you surrender all to me today that I might do something greater in your life? And so right now, this is what I want to do. This is what I want to do. This is what I need to do. I need everybody in here that just wants to see the ram in the bush manifest in your life to make your way to the altar right now. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, right now. Right now in the name of Jesus. You want to see the ram in the bush so you make your way to the altar. Yeah. Come on, come on, come on. Yeah. just need us to press in closer, press in closer. If you lay your hands on your, your neighbor's shoulder at the altar, that would be just fine. That would be just fine. That would be just fine. Lay your hands on your neighbor at the altar. Come on, let's squeeze in. Bless you, brother. Now. Right now, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we we, 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 we present ourselves at the altar. Some of us are wrapped up and we're bound, bound by disease, bound by illness, bound by financial restraints, bound by our decisions, bound by some mistakes, bound by some things in which we wish we could change, but we have no say so right now. But Lord, we come right now believing that as we lift our hands unto you, you can and you will provide. Dear Lord, we're not naive enough to believe that you don't have a say-so still. We're not naive enough to suggest, Lord, you can't do something about it right now. But dear Lord, we declare and we decree right now in the name of Jesus that you're going to move, that you're going to touch, that you're going to heal, that you're going to move in ways in which we don't even know to ask for, that you're going to touch, or that you're going to move, that you're going to provide, that you're going to make a way like no one has ever thought of before. Dear Lord, we come right now believing in the name of Jesus, 
that you are a God in which we can say now unto him who is able to do exceedingly and abundantly uh, above and beyond all that we know to ask for or can imagine. And so right now, dear Lord, we say do greater. Our imaginations aren't big enough to conceive what you're able to do. So do greater, Lord. Whatever it is that we have on our minds that we're asking you to do, do greater, Lord. Whatever we're asking, healing, do greater, Lord. Finances, do greater, Lord. Job, do greater, Lord. Oh, Lord, you know what to do and we don't even know to ask for. And so right now, dear Lord, I'm praying that when we leave this altar, we get up with some expectation in our hearts. That when we get up, dear Lord, that the Holy Spirit might overwhelm us in such a way that we know is already done. Bless us right now, dear Lord, for every fear that we have. Give us the strip to trust you greater. For every doubt that we have, give us the boldness to say God will do it anyway. For everything that is going against us, Lord, the Bible says if you be for us, who can be against us? Which means, Lord, all we need is you. And so we come now saying, Lord, do what only you can do right now in the name of Jesus. That when we return to this place again, our testimony might be God provided a ram in the bush. And so right now, as your people have availed themselves to the altar, they come saying, I trust you, God. I believe you, God. I'm counting on you, God. I know you can do it, God. Nothing is too hard for you, God. Make a way, God. Help me, God. Show yourself mighty. Show yourself strong. Show up and show out. Come on, Lord. Do it. Do it, Lord. 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 Ah. Ah. So here it is, Lord. We rise saying thank you. 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 We rise saying it's done. We rise saying it's finished. We rise excited. We rise not because it's changed, but we rise because we know what you can do. We rise saying thank you. Can anybody open up your mouth and just begin to say thank you? Come on, we rise. We rise and we say thank you. Come on, we rise and we say thank you. We rise and we say thank you. We rise and we say thank you. Oh, we say thank you. Because we believe you, Lord. We believe you, Lord. We thank you in advance, 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 Lord. Oh, we thank you in advance. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Break every chain. Break every chain. Break every chain. To break every chain. Break every chain. Break every chain. Listen, 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 listen. We prayed. We rose and we thank God for the, the altar is still here. Yeah, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. But right now, this is what I need to know, especially because I have my children here. This is what I need to know because we can't rise and say thank you in the name of Jesus if we haven't given our life unto the Lord. And what that means is this, y'all. If you haven't suggested to the Lord that I want to give my life unto you because I know, I know, I know, I know I need you. If you would leave here today and God forbid anything like Charleston happens ever again. But even in the church, you're not safe. And if something detrimental were to happen to you, do you know if you're going to heaven or not is the question. 
And if you don't know the answer to it, if you don't know what that means, if you don't know how to answer it, or if you don't believe in your heart that you're saved, I don't want to leave Maryland before I can suggest that I did what you called me to do, Lord. And so if that's you today, if you don't know if you're saved, if you want to give your life to the Lord, if you want to give the Lord a chance to show up and show out in your life, then come on right now. Come on right now. Today is your day for the Lord to do what you never knew he could do. And so right now, allow the Lord to save your life. Pastor C. Wright would have me also to help somebody to understand that if you don't have a church home, you don't have a church home, he and his ministerial staff would love to have you, would love to love on you, would love to help you grow into a place in which you've never been before. And so if that is you at any point in time, you're welcome. We're waiting. We're waiting. Isn't there a sweet spirit in the house? We're waiting. We're waiting. Come on now. Come on now. Yeah, put your hands together. The Lord bless you today. Come on, put your hands together. The Lord bless you today. Oh, hallelujah. Put your hands together. The Lord bless you today.